you have no idea how long I've been waiting to film this video. It has happened. I finally got my period back. It feels like a reset. My health is back in order and it just feels so freaking amazing. I wanted to sit down and I just wanted to have a chat because it was it's just so much easier for me to make a video instead of individually answering all the questions that I have been getting. I get it. I was in like such a negative headspace, so not believing that I was going to get it back for a little bit because I was just getting annoyed and I was like, this is taking so long. But <laughs> it's amazing and it does, it, it will come back. It will, it 100% will. You just have to be patient and you have to give yourself some time. Using your period really just comes down to energy availability. If you are in a negative energy balance, your body is going to shut down its what it perceives as its least important bodily system. So unfortunately for girls, your menstrual cycle is one of the first things to go. It's your body protecting you and because pretty much you're not feeding it enough for what you're doing. I started trying, I got my hormones tested just so I could have a baseline. So I first started off in May. My estrogen levels were like so low that they didn't have a number. So on the report, it just says less than 43. It was the same in September. And then I got them done again, literally last week. They were up to 390. So that is massive. One that you want to look at is your progesterone. So um, in May, it was one. In September, it was two. And then in November, it was 22. So there's a massive increase in my hormone levels. I'm going to talk about in detail how I got it back in three different components. So first, I'm going to talk about nutrition. Then I'm going to talk about exercise. And then I'm going to talk about stress. First thing that I did, I changed my nutrition. So I increased my calories and I made sure at every single meal, it was balanced with the macronutrients of fats, carbs, and proteins. Day in the life, what I would eat was for breakfast, I have a serve of oats, serve protein powder, banana, some soy milk or almond milk, a tablespoon of peanut butter, and also a table of flax seeds. Then for lunch would look like a serve of rice with tofu, with like a tahini dressing, and then some veggies. A serve of tempeh on some tacos, so some soft shell tacos with lots of salad, and then a heap of guacamole. The same thing for dinner. So I would have like curries with rice and um, coconut milk. But what I used to do would load, load, load up vegetables. So I used to eat so many vegetables and then just a piece of protein. So I used to eat like some tofu with like a whole bunch of veggies. I didn't realize was I was getting full off the protein and the fiber. I was not eating enough carbohydrates to support my energy levels. I didn't have rice, I wouldn't have potato, and I wouldn't have like any sort of carb really. I was a bit of a carbophobe. So really making sure you're increasing your carbohydrate intake, probably reducing your fiber in order so you're absorbing the right nutrients for one, and two, so you have long lasting energy without any sort of crashes. My snacks in between, I really boosted those. So I was making a lot of energy balls. I was eating a lot of smoothies, eating like, oh, I was on the wheat bix train, so I really enjoying wheat bix toast, lots of toast with like avo and toast with peanut butter. At the beginning of changing my nutrition was I got extreme hunger. Oh my God, it was crazy. I would eat breakfast and then like one hour later, I would have to eat another meal because I was still hungry. Hunger hit me, it hit me pretty bad. But what I did, I, I just ate. Honestly, like the best way to get over extreme hunger is to eat. Eat when your body tells you to eat because I promise you, it will tell you when you are full. You can feel the difference of being full and being still hungry. And that was such a new phenomenon for me because I was like, oh my God, I feel full and this feels weird because I'm not used to this. Because I was in a calorie deficit for so long, I didn't know what it felt like to be full. I would eat a meal and be like, yeah, 
I could eat again, <laughs> but never did anything about it. With eating more calories also came a mental battle of, Luz, you're gonna get fat. But literally, these are the stories that you make up in your head. Yes, you are going to gain weight, but that doesn't mean you're going to get fat. Niels actually told me, Niels is my partner, if you don't follow me, he actually said, Loz, like, your body is the best that it's ever looked. Eating more can seem scary, but it's actually so good. It's so good, honestly. Dealing with weight gain was quite difficult at the beginning. Yes, you, I did gain, like, probably, I haven't weighed myself. I've stopped weighing myself, but I literally, probably definitely gained at least eight kilos. But the thing is like you gain weight, but you gain weight to a healthy size and you look like a woman. You don't look like a skinny little girl that's gonna break. So definitely weight gain, challenging at the beginning, but literally the best thing that I've ever done. And now I'm excited because I'm excited I'm gonna gain more weight and I'm excited about that. I'm excited to build muscle. I'm excited to get strong again. And in order to do that, I know the scales are going to go up. So I'm actually excited about gaining weight. <laughs> that comes with increasing your calories is your hair gets nicer, your nails get better, your moods improve, you're less irritable. Stop thinking about food all the time. Like I used to think about breakfast, lunch and dinner for like for the next day. I used to plan my meals and I was like always constantly thinking about food. But what I didn't really actually realize is that an, is another thing that your body is telling you that you're hungry and you need to eat more. <laughs> so mental hunger is another sign besides like physical hunger is another way that your brain is telling you to eat more. Eating more calories, it definitely made me stop thinking about food. And I started thinking about food as, oh, that's whatever. Like, oh, I still enjoy like an amazing meal and I still love making amazing things but there's a difference between obsessing and just having, enjoying it for pleasure. The hardest thing for me in this whole journey was actually giving up my exercise. I'm an exercise physiologist. I do it every day. I do rehab with people. I do strength and conditioning with people and I teach Pilates. So I love exercise. So giving this up was extremely hard. And this is the thing that I struggled with the most. I think this is the thing that really pushed me over the line. So for four weeks, I gave up gym completely. And at this point in time, right now, I still haven't been back to the gym. I'm so excited though, because I'm going to start going again next week. And I'm so excited about it. <laughs> but yeah, so I no gym at all. I was doing one or two Pilates classes a week. And then on the other days I was only walking. The beginning when I gave up the gym, probably like two week mark, I got really upset because I could definitely see changes in my body. I was definitely losing like the perkiness of like my glutes and around in my torso. So after a couple of more weeks, like right now, I like, I looked at myself in the mirror this morning and I was like, I don't hate what I look like. And it was such a good feeling. Being up the gym, is really hard at the beginning but honestly after you do it for a couple of weeks it's honestly it's not so bad i'm really excited to go back and i'm really excited to share with you guys how i'm going to train in and around my menstrual cycle <laughs> around my period whatever <laughs> and do it in a safe way so that's really stay tuned to see that and then the last thing uh, is decreasing your stress so doing less have less things on your plate going out and doing more social things. I used to be like afraid of people and not want to go out and do anything. I used to be afraid of food, so I didn't want to go out and socialize because I didn't want to be around the food. I definitely started implementing systems, writing notes, writing lists, just having everything in a little bit more order, having help from Niels because he's such a analytical, organized human. So it was really nice getting him into my creative brain and like writing stuff down and making a plan. Being a woman is like, life is meant to be about love and connection and staying at home, content creating and not putting your friends first and being scared because you don't want to go out for a beer or you don't want to go out for food is honestly like so not worth it. So go out, have the food, have the social life, have the experiences, 
because honestly you you get in such a better mind space and you get in such a better like you just feel so good so if you're watching this that you're probably struggling with getting your period back and honestly what you think is not how it goes so if i could tell myself four weeks ago when i made the decision to give up the gym if i could go back and say loz you're gonna be okay and you're probably gonna be so much happier after getting your period back like i get it telling someone to eat more and exercise less when their whole life is about fitness and wanting to get strong and want to be healthy and just want to have this idealistic vision of what they want to look like. Telling them to change their behavior is so hard. I want to tell the world that what you make up in your head is not reality and there is light at the end of the tunnel. All you have to do is stick to your plan, give yourself time and give yourself a love. Have any questions or anything, please reach out. Like, Find me on Instagram, Green Wellbeing. I'm sharing recipes. I'm sharing now my new workout routines. I'm sharing everything there is to health and wellness with no diet mentality. So thanks for watching and I will see you next week.